Ladies and gentlemen, as you guys know, with season one, we got a pretty big zombies update, but one of the biggest things in it is the new schematics. There are essentially six new season one schematics that you can go in and earn, and pretty much all of them are done through Easter eggs. So in this video, what I'm going to be giving you is the steps to earn all of the new season one schematics. And there's a lot of different steps. And essentially, there is two different ways and two things that you're going to have to do and two Easter eggs that you're going to have to know to get all of these. Now, if you don't know what the schematics are, they include the flawless Ethereum schematic, the dog bone, which allows you to have a tier three dog and bring it into the game, the ether blade plans, which is like a throwing knife. That's a boomerang, the scorcher, which is the, of course, legendary weapon that was put in the game at the beginning. Now you can use a schematic on it. The legendary ether tool, which gives your weapon the gold or sorry, orange status on it. And then the golden armor plates, which allows for your armor to auto regen in game. All of these can be earned. They're basically the most powerful schematics in the game. And there's a lot of steps to actually get these. So that is what I'm going to show you in this video, how to get all of them, how to earn all of them. Let me tell you, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So the first three I'm going to show you how to get include the dog bone schematic, the golden plates and the ether blade. So step one of doing this is completing act four. Now I have an entire video on how to beat act four solo the easiest way possible. It'll be linked down in the description. But if you're not solo, all you need to know is pack a punch your weapons. You're going into essentially a tier two zone. You're going to go in. You're going to complete the objectives within the dark ether. Eventually, you are going to spawn this giant worm, an ether worm that you're going to have to fight. If you're doing this solo, watch the video down in the description. If you're with a team, just know that you have to put out a bunch of different damage. Um, use pack a punch weapons, use turrets. They work really well. And on top of that, if the worm buries itself underground, you're going to want to shoot some sort of explosive at the ground to get him to pop up because he's, when he's underground, he is going to regen health. Now, when you actually complete this boss, this is the part of how you get the schematics. You're going to need to go into the rift that it spawns, and it is going to give you this journal. It's a legendary journal. You're going to want to extract and then put that into your storage alongside everything else that you extract with. Put it into your storage because there's a couple other steps that we're going to need to do next that is going to allow us to actually earn the schematic. So there are three other items that you're going to have to obtain, and there's a couple of different ways that you have to get them. So the first of which is the dog collar. For this one, you're either going to need a Molotov or I believe a thermite works as well, but I know guaranteed a Molotov does. You're going to go and take that Molotov and find one of the dog kennels. When you get to it, you're going to put it into the dog kennel instead of chunks of flesh. This is going to spawn an enemy dog. When you kill that dog, it is going to give you the dog collar. So the next one is for brain rot. And for this one, you are going to equip brain rot on whatever weapon you're using. You're going to go to an ether nest or an ether stronghold. When you're inside, you're going to find those glowing yellow spores. When you shoot it with brain rot, do not destroy it. Just shoot it once. It is going to turn it green. You are then going to be able to interact with that. And when you do, it is going to give you a pill bottle. The final one is for dead wire. For this one, you want to equip dead wire on your weapon and find a harvester orb. Now, for this one, there is a little bit of a caveat to it. You need to shoot the harvester orb with your weapon with dead wire. It is going to turn the orb yellow. If you have teammates and they do not have dead wire and they shoot it, it will go back to purple. And I think that breaks it. But what you're going to do is you're going to kill the harvester orb using a weapon with dead wire, and it is going to drop a surveillance camera. So after you have all three of these, or after you do one of them, you're going to find one of those purple rifts that spawn on the map. Now, when you go through it this time, you're going to pull your shoot right away because there's going to be another rift up in the air. There are three of them, I believe a green one, a orange one, and finally a red one. When you go through these, they are going to give you immediately a bounty contract in its respective zone. So the green one's a tier one zone, the orange one is a tier two zone, and the red one is a tier three zone. Each time you complete one of these, it's going to make it so that those items that we just got turn legendary. So then you're going to have the legendary dog collar, legendary pill bottle, and legendary surveillance camera. And don't forget about your legendary notebook that you got within Act 4. So you are then going to take all four of these items. And you know that giant tornado that's in the air, you're going to go there. You're going to find four pillars there, each of them with their own weapon mod on them. So you're going to take the chilled notebook and put it on the frost blast pillar. You are going to take the pill bottle, put it on the brain rot pillar. You're going to take the surveillance camera, put it on the dead wire pillar. And finally, you are going to go to the napalm burst, and that is where you're going to put the dog collar. When you put them all on the correct pillars, it is going to spawn a giant ether portal. And when you do, 
a mega abomination is going to come out. So this is actually the easiest part of the whole thing because I'm going to show you a way to cheese it. If you actually just go in the water, swim across it to the other side, none of the zombies or elites or anything that spawn in are going to be able to attack you. Even the Mega Abomination is going to have its one attack that's a ranged attack, but you can avoid it very easily. And you can just unload into the Mega Abomination and kill it from across the way without any problem whatsoever. Now, believe it or not, we are still not done because when you take out that Mega Abomination, it is going to drop an Ether Sigil. Now, this Sigil is kind of a bronzy color. And what you do with this is take it and put it into that portal that we just spawned. When you do, it is going to take you to the Dark Ether once again, but this time, essentially, there are Tier 4 zombies, not Tier 3, which means there's Tier 4 elites, and they are very, very hard to kill. This part is very near impossible to do solo. It is very, very difficult, and two of the things that we're going to do, I will almost say, are impossible solo, but you're going to want decoy grenades is what you're going to want to know. Now, when you do this, you're going to have 30 minutes inside the dark ether. There is going to be three bunnies that spawn around the map. And when you find the bunnies, if you can't find them, by the way, I'm going to show you the spots that they are. But if you can't find them, they laugh. You can hear where they are. You can locate them that way. Uh, but the first one that we have here is off to the left hand side. It's on top of the armory. And when you get this one, it is going to give you a harvester contract. To do this one, you just have to go to the three different harvesters, activate them, and it's going to give you a rift award. This is the easiest one to do solo. Now, when you do these, a lot of the time they're going to give you something called an elder sigil we'll come back to this in a minute but that is how you actually get the schematics now the other contracts the next one kind of spawns on top of one of the spires of the castle if you go to the location you're seeing here that is where you will find it this one is going to give you an escort contract when you complete that it'll give you another rift the final one is in the bus on the road here. You grab this one. It is going to give you an outlast contract. That's probably the second easiest one, but still very difficult and very near impossible to do solo. Now, in this area, when you use just the regular ether sigil, it is not going to give you any sort of schematics. How you get the schematics is you go in with the elder sigil. So that kind of yellow sigil that it gives you, you then take that one and put it inside the portal. By the way, if you go in and do this and you die and you lose your sigil and you don't get an elder sigil, what you're going to want to know is that you can get another ether sigil by completing tier three contracts in the tier three zone. So now you have the elder sigil. This time you're going to go in once again. The bunnies go in the same place. They give you the same sort of bounties, but this time you only have 15 minutes. This time when you complete them, it is going to give you a schematic. If you are doing this solo, the only one that you're probably going to be able to do is the ether extractors, the very first one that I showed you. If you are with a team, you can complete all three and each of them is going to give you a schematic. So that is how you get the ether blade, the dog bone, and finally the golden plates, all of which are very, very strong and all of which will help you in the next section and the next Easter egg we have to do. So the next set of schematics is for the flawless Ethereum crystal, the legendary ether tool, and the scorcher. Now this one, you have to do a completely separate Easter egg to do. This one, the Easter egg is easier. However, the boss fight is more difficult and it is near, not impossible, but near impossible to do solo. So this map here is made by a guy named Detonated and we're going to look at this a couple times throughout it. It's an awesome map. Good on him for making this. Uh, but where we're going to start here is focused on the two stars in the top left or top right hand corner of the map. The one that I specifically go to here is in Orlov military base. When you go to that location, you're going to go in a specific building and on the second floor, you are going to find a room and you're actually going to get an audio cue when you go in the room and it's going to tell you about a map and some pictures that they have on the wall. You specifically want to pay attention to the four pictures. When you look at them, they're going to correspond with four different areas on the map. And when you're watching my gameplay here, you're going to kind of see me look at the pictures, look at my map and then ping different areas on my map. In each of those pictures, there is going to to be kind of one of these portable UAV things that you can go to. And when you interact with them, they are going to give you USB keys. Now, each of them gives you a different USB key, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. And what you are going to do is you are going to obtain all four USB keys within one individual game. If you exfil with them, you don't get to carry them over to the next game. So you want to go to each individual location and get the Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta keys. And then you are going to bring them to the location that I'm going to show you next. So what you're going to want to look for is an area around the storm on the map that has two ammo supplies really close together. It's different every single game, but they're always going to be two ammo clashes close together. So find that location and you're going to take your USB keys 
is and go there. Now you can't do the next part until the storm starts expanding and expands over top of the little computer things that you're going to put the USBs into. Now, when it eventually does, you're going to put in all four USB keys and then wait a minute. After you wait a minute, zombies are going to spawn and then all of a sudden a giant red ether worm is going to come in and start attacking to you. This is the strongest worm that we have fought against so far and it is very hard to take down. In fact, it is nearly impossible to do solo. I've only seen a couple of people do it so far. Essentially, what you need to know is, first of all, the storm has moved in, so you're going to need a durable gas mask. The durable gas mask can be restocked using the ammo caches. So whenever it gets low, go to the ammo cache, refill it. If you lose your gas mask, you are essentially screwed. Now, you only have a set amount of time until the end of the game, so you're going to want to do a lot of damage really, really quickly. Now, the more players you have with you, the more health the worm is actually going to have. So it is possible to do solo. It is just very, very difficult. But eventually, when you complete it, when you kill the worm, it is going to give you one of the three schematics that we have left the flawless ethereum crystal the legendary ether tool or the scorcher so you at least have to do this three times to actually obtain all three schematics so that is how to unlock all of the new season one schematics within modern warfare 3 zombies now the one thing i did want to say in this video is this can be extremely extremely frustrating a lot of these take a lot of time you need a lot of essence you need to triple pack a lot of weapons and with the way that the game is currently working and what i mean by that is how it crashes literally all of the time it is incredibly frustrating. Something needs to be done in this game where if you crash, your items are kept or the amount of essence you have is kept because the amount of times that I've worked up to like 50,000, been ready to tombstone, go in the next game and actually complete the Easter egg, and then I've crashed and lost everything is way, way, way too frequently. And something needs to be done about it because doing all of these, taking all the time to do that, and then just having it crashing is so, so frustrating. I, I just wanted to throw that in there. I know it has nothing to do with getting the schematics. I just wanted to address it. I don't see many people talking about it. So I just wanted to throw that in there, but that is how you get all the schematics. Hopefully I could help you out. Hopefully you learned how to do it. Hopefully you can do it for yourself. And if you did, let me know down in the comments. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, hit that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, all of that kind of jazz. Many more videos coming soon. We've got some more zone content coming this week, some more zombies content. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're making this to us.